Dear friends, dear colleagues, uh, once again we would like to show you our research in the area of dermatologic surgery and nitrosogenesis and oncopharmacogenesis of uh, keratinocyte cancer, especially after use of uh, several uh, drugs like Delvisatan and Amlodipine, uh, where a rotation advancement flap uh, as adequate uh, approach has been performed. There is uh, no conflict of interest, no financial support, and we would like to present a 69-year-old female patient who came to our dermatology department with a five-year-old tumor formation on the scalp in the close proximity of the frontal region that had been growing for about five years prior to this consultation. A physical examination has shown a giant tumor with 5 to 7 centimeters in diameter covered with several hemorrhagic crusts and undefined borders and preoperative biopsy has confirmed the diagnosis of PCC as you can see here so that uh, we have taken the decision to make a, a special removal with a, a rotation advancement flap. Um, due to comorbidities uh, like arterial hypertension and um, tachycardia, the patient was on systemic TMRT therapy with telmisartan and tamodipine once daily for nine years, so that the additional uh, the patient has taken hydroxycine once daily in the evening and chlortaliton for two years, and uh, diagnostic procedures preoperatively was uh, uh, has uh, shown a slight uh, elevation of the uh, glucose level and um, computed the result tomography of the head uh, showed a normal brain image without uh, deviations or changes in the bone structure on the frontal area and no osteolysis. Uh, it has been taken the decision that uh, preoperative consultation uh, with cardiologists to be performed and um, the medication was changed to Nebivolol. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know that Nebivolol is also listed in the FDA list from 2023 for nitrosamine contaminated drugs once daily and additional clonidine when needed. So, we have taken the decision uh, to perform a giant uh, removal with the advancement uh, rotation flap. Uh, and, uh, of course, the histopathology of this uh, lesion showed uh, uh, stage 2 nodular type of BCC without evidence of metastasis, and we have achieved a very good uh, result. Here, I will have the uh, possibility to show several images from this uh, nice operation together uh, with the help of a uh, friend of me, Professor Lozef. This uh, has been uh, performed in the surgical unit uh, and you see the primary uh, lesion so that uh, we have taken the decision to remove the whole scalp in the direction uh, frontal so that the first step is of course to remove the primary lesion, stop the bleeding and accordingly then to perform the next steps. Here you see uh, it was a really great uh, defect on this area and then we have performed undermining uh, the whole scalp uh, very carefully in order to pre uh, preserve the occipital arteria uh, blood supply and to keep uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, flap uh, intact and uh, uh, with a good uh, blood feeding. Uh, you see that we have uh, removed this and it was uh, really a bloody procedure. However, uh, the arteric hospitalis supply has stayed. And after that, you see that uh, we have adapted accordingly the flap in the frontal area. And um, after um, uh, you see cleaning of the blood, uh, it was a very, very nice uh, procedure. And um, uh, then the patient on the next day, you see the patient on the next day without any complaints. This is day uh, one after surgery and where we have uh, seen her. <coughs> then you see it on the day three or day four. Uh, after that, you see it on day seven uh, with the process of wound healing. Then you see it on day 12, day, then day 14, then then. 21, where you see that uh, there are no complaints and no complication after this manipulation. And then you see it after 21 days, and then you see it after, I think, 28 days, so that we have a very, very uh, good result. 
Uh, why we want to present this uh, once again? First of all, it is uh, the problem with the giant tumors in this area, where we have not enough place to, uh, for defect closure. And uh, the second one is, of course, the pathogenetic aspect of the uh, uh, BCC lesion, where the polycontamination or molecontamination of uh, amlodipine and telmisartan mm -hmm. might or probably could pose a serious problem. We know that keratinocytic tumors, whether BCC or squamous cell carcinomas, have the tendency to grow toward bow invasion and subsequent destruction. And, and uh, although the estimated risk is very low, it must be acknowledged that uh, when left untreated, BCC can slowly but surely infiltrate the bone area, and this might be a problem. A major risk for, the, uh, for this uh, BCC development is to be the photocarcinogenesis or the UV radiation. But not only, you see that we have spoken already in our previous lectures about the nitrosamines, which uh, where some of them could be seen as potential photocarcinogens. Uh, so that uh, the early eradication of these uh, tumors is the most uh, important one. Uh, in comparison to the traditional smaller PCCs, uh, giant carcinomas show a different clinical behavior. They are more aggressive, more rapid in their growth and um, they tend to yeah, show the tendency to uh, infiltrate the underlying bone and, and the, some extra dermal structures. According to the literature data, the frequency of the, these carcinomas compared to other types of PCC does not exceed uh, the limit of one. And um, the pathogenesis of the disease is a mystery, unknown, probably the neglect of the primary tumors and the initial symptoms in older patients, the fear, uh, uh, is one of the reasons, according uh, to other experts uh, or dermatologic surgeons. The reason for the appearance of the giant BCCs, uh, in addition to neglect, is also the inadequate treatment with other types, um, such as uh, inadequate cryotherapy or uh, X-ray or curatage or whatever it is. Uh, in terms of prognosis, uh, the histological finding plays important roles, uh, and based on this uh, result, uh, we can predict uh, in some of the cases the tendency for tumor growth. Uh, according to this data, nodal and superficial spreading uh, growing BCCs uh, carcinomas are less aggressive than uh, metatypical micronodular and morphia formula, but um, some of them have the tendency or show the tendency to have a lymphogenous and hematogenous metastasis. The hematogenous metastasis could affect the parenchymal organs and bones, thus leading to a meal of tizic anemia, like some reports in the literature. According to other experts, uh, there is no correlation between the histological types and the giant diseases in the uh, metastasis development. Other uh, expert groups connect the size with the uh, uh, metastatic spread development, but it is not also completely sure there are different possibilities to treat these tumors. The white local excision, surgical excision is a good one. The best one is the most micrographic uh, surgeries. <coughs> but, uh, however, we have uh, performed the most uh, difficult, most adequate one. And uh, this is the advanced uh, rotation flap technique uh, where we could be proud with the, uh, the post-operative results, as you can see. Of course, uh, here you have to have the help of uh, uh, preoperative ultrasound in order to preserve some arterial vessels like occipital or temporal arteries in order to have a good uh, flap feeling. And uh, we know that uh, the, this is very, very important. Uh, the second part is, of course, again, the nitrosotelmisatan and nitrosoamlodipin availability, and uh, this seems to be not a myth, but just a reality. We know that uh, telmisatan nitroso test methyl impurity and amlodipin nitroso impurity are a reality, and all of them are listed in the FDA list. You see that amlodipin has the carcinogenic potency of 5. I have marked this in red color. And um, this is important. This is a very low carcinogenic, uh, uh, carcinogenic potency. However, the angiotensin receptor antagonists uh, like valsartan, losartan, and irbesartan uh, could be at the risk of having different types of contamination with three different types of nitrosamines like NDMA, NDAA, and NADA, so that you can see that the carcinogenic potency is between 1 and 2. And when we have probably uh, 1, like in telmisartan, we could have really a big problem. Uh, here is the explanation about uh, this carcinogenic potency. Uh, when somebody is interested, he could, uh, uh, of course, take a careful uh, look on this. And um, we know that polymedication, polycontamination with uh, nitrosamine uh, in polymorbid patients might bear some uh, serious risk for the development of keratinocytic cancer. And um, new studies are negative exactly for that relation. 
so that nitrosamine means in subsequent skin cancer development in progression after different combination uh, uh, is a reality, a heavy reality, rather than a myth. Uh, we have started several groups of patients to follow them with my young colleagues, and we have found out that, again, sartans and bausartan as monotherapy is a risk factor for the development of keratinocyte cancer, not only for melanoma, also candesartan in combination with amlodipine or felodipine could be at the risk of development of keratinocyte cancer. Also, sartans with amlodipine has been linked uh, for the uh, different combinations, again, uh, for the development of uh, keratinocyte cancer. And uh, the question remains again, is this our observation? Is this our obsession, thesis or a hypothesis? No, international data are presented and indicative, but have been neglected over the, the last years. Here we speak about the atrisnatone again. Let us take a careful look. The monotherapy with sartans is associated with basal cell carcinoma development, especially when we have adjusted all the ratio, we have 200 86% or fast 300% a risk of developing uh, keratinocytic cancer. At the same time, we have uh, the, the possibility to develop squamous cell carcinoma about 222%, which is also a fear scenario. It is a really disaster. Uh, so that uh, probably here the nitrosamines are the common unifying risk because we see that in the same time we have uh, uh, a risk for developing about 24% of cutaneous melanoma. Uh, what could explain the risk development of these three types of cancer when we have one and the same drug in different types of tumors? Probably the carcinogen. Uh, we know that impurities below the established limits will be tolerated. Uh, it is the statement from the FDA for a short period of time just to avoid for shortage of these pharmaceuticals. However, nowadays we see that uh, this problem is well known since uh, 2018, but till 2024 we do not have the final decision or elimination regimes. The patient data uh, and the analysis presented are indicative of the relationship that exists between the intake of potentially actually contaminated with nitrosamine stem with sartana and and the relative short-term development of keratinocytic cancer uh, with for no more than two years after that. Polymedication and polycontamination uh, of probably of these two substances or one substance with nitrosamines are among the most likely cofactors for the development of keratinocytic cancers. This is our thesis, and these findings are mostly supported by available retrospective prospective follow-up of single patients, but also past large-scale uh, retrospective analysis concerning the intake of potentially contaminated drugs. The FDA list of potentially nitrosamine contaminated drugs is proving to be the most potent weapon against the fight uh, against cancer. Even though at present regulators guidance to the pharmaceutical industry is recommended but not a mandatory one. Those dependent time intervals for cancer generation after the take of these uh, potentially contaminated drugs in certain geographic regions are strongly indicative of such an association, which in practice could be defined as pathogenetic one. What is important that could be even more indicative, the official labeling of nitrosamine concentration in drug packages inserts, as well as those of more than 300 NDSRIs, would also be seen as one of the main contributions to solving the mystery of skin cancer, but not only. The persistent absence of officialization is indicative that such a relationship is entirely possible and should currently be regarded as an unofficial reality, the judgment being that of the regulators. Who is harmed? The important question is by the officialization of the availability of nitrosamines. Officialization harms probably financially the pharmaceutical world and industry, and to some extent the regulators, because they have additional headaches regarding the production of clearance or clearance of difficult decisions which has to be performed in order uh, to avoid uh, drug shortages. Who does officialization help? Of course, patients, clinicians. How to explain the heterogeneous nature and differences of results in publications all over the world that concern skin cancer incidence and the intake of certain potentially actually contaminated drug production? This is the, uh, the biggest problem. And we have the answer by the sporadic or controlled or allowed contamination of specific geographic regions. This is what is mean uh, controlled, allowed impurity of drug production, and why is this important? This has to be clarified to all clinicians. 
the fact that actual checks for availability of contamination for sartans, for example, with nitrosamines in certain geographical regions like Turkey or Istanbul, is showing the absence of any contamination is indicative for the, pro for the following one. It is technical that producers or pharmaceutical companies and regulators are technically able to eliminate this contamination and the unexplained behavior of the FDA and TEMA, why the regulators in the face of both of them are not insisting that this happen in a timely manner is a worrying one. Having a controlled frequency of their contamination also makes the following statement possible. Timely and topographically controlled allowed contamination with nitrosamines seems to be also a scenario, seems to be also possible. It is this nature of contamination of the output that also explains the contradictory results of scientific papers worldwide. Two important papers shed light about the following statements. Some nitrosamines are strong photocarcinogens and at the same time human mutagens. We have also spoken in our previous lectures about gerotoxicity and the stability of n nitrosomorphulin, which are indicating that uh, after UV radiation, uh, the phototreated nitrosomorpholin was directly mutagenic one. Photoactivated uh, nitrosomorpholin attached air pollutants, for example, could float into the air and fall to the skin of the human body and leading to genotoxicity induced by the irradiated more. What about the same or similar substances in drugs? We know uh, something very, very important. This is a paper published in Critical Review of Toxicology in November 2023, speaking here about and clarifying the thesis about the uh, uh, formation of nitrosamines and uh, tobacco-specific nitrosamines and their carcinogenic potential or mutagenic implications for human DNA. And here we see that uh, tobacco-specific uh, nitrosamines are uh, uh, human toxic genotoxic, they are potent carcinogens that cause mutations in critical genes in human DNA, and especially uh, they are leading to mutations in critical target genes, like the RAS oncogenes in the P53, the tumor suppressor gene, or the so-called guardian of the genome. And we know that both of these uh, uh, oncogenes or the tumor suppressor genes are involved in the pathogenesis of keratinocytic cancer and the non keratinocytic cancer, such as melanoma, and most of the mutations affect those genes. So that we have an um, overlapping, uh, we have also an overlapping of the genes affected by the photocarcinogenesis. We know that photocarcinogens, uh, uh, the UV light, uh, is also able to induce P53 mutations uh, like the tobacco-specific uh, nitrosamines. We have similar nitrosamines with the drugs so that we have in front of us the, 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 the idea to clarify the significance of each participant of these factors in the pathogenesis of skin cancer, because this overlapping is a very, very worrying one. Officialization of the concentrations and the type of nitrosamines in the packaging and prescriptions of contaminated drugs would surely allow a more accurate assessment of the cumulative intake of carcinogens while also further clarifying proving their potential real significant association with skin cancer uh, skin cancer development and degeneration. The lack of this utilization also puts patients to date in, in the reach of uh, an uncontrolled prospective study with unclear parameters and for an undefined period of time. Our case study seems to be indicative again that the possible recontamination in telmisartan and tamodipine with nitrosamines or NDSRIs could be at the risk uh, for at least a cofactor for keratinocyte cancer development progression in this case a giant BCC, after five-year intake. Nitrosogenesis and skin scarcer seems to be a reality and not a myth. It is a part of the, uh, probably, of the photonitrosogenesis, which has to be clarified in the uh, subsequent or coming years, in the near future. Nitrosogenesis is part from the so-called oncopharmacogenesis or pharmaco-oncogenesis. It uh, is a new, completely, definition in medicine which uh, needs so its uh, clarification in order to decide a deserved position. Both of them are part of the modern understanding of skin cancers, of skin cancers, pathogenesis. We have uh, had the honor to publish both papers, one of them of the Dermatology Reports, uh, which is uh, an official Italian journal for dermatologic surgery, and the other one uh, has been published in the 
uh, official journal of the Portuguese Society of Dermatology and Venerology, uh, where they have accepted our thesis and suggestion, so that we could be really very uh, proud with these two realizations, because this is a pure Bulgarian uh, collective. Uh, thank you once again for your attention. Uh, wishing all the best from Sofia. Ciao.